I like to associate naturally achieved uh, behaviors to reward. And that's always been my way to train dogs. And that's how I build the attachment with the dogs. And that's why the dogs feel close to me. And I think that in building that closeness, I find that the leash, the need to leash them disappears. Capri, ball. So while the dogs, the bigger dogs, are driven by this, the smaller dog hasn't really understood what that means yet. She doesn't know what fetch means. She's four months old. I haven't taught her how to run after a ball, and she naturally doesn't care for this. I am going to teach her this eventually, but not right now. There's no rush. Like I said, this is all about being natural, and this is all about doing it on the dog's time, and letting them dictate the behaviors. And all I'm doing is, is simply just guiding and marking the behaviors. So right now, you can see she's coming, she's behind me again. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna turn to her. And while I have her attention, I throw the ball. Yes! I'm gonna bring her back to me over here. So I keep her attention on me, yes! So now she's learning that even in the face of distraction, she can still focus on me. And I'm doing it without a leash. And you can see that it's going to make her want to come to me more, naturally. I'm not forcing her to be here. She's just naturally coming to me because she knows that I have something that she wants more than she wants that ball. And now she's seen me here, so she's going to naturally come to me because we've been doing this already so casually. And so she's starting to understand it, but she doesn't know why she understands it. I'm simply selecting the point in time where she does those behaviors, and then I'm rewarding her for it. All right, so I'm gonna wait until she's behind me again, see? And then I'm gonna turn to her, and then throw the ball. Yes! And reward her right here. So even though she's looking there, I'm gonna stand in front of her. I'm gonna draw her attention back to me. Yes! And if you notice, I'm rewarding her just for sitting down. Yes! So when she sits down and she looks at me, I reward her. And I try not to do it too many times in a row. I'll do it a few times and then I'll just walk away. And look, where's the ball? Okay, watch this again. So I have her right here. She knows what I have in my hand. Yes. Let's run a quick test and see how she reacts when I actually call her while the dogs are running around and being excited. That's perfect. She's run with the dogs for the first time. So this is gonna give me a chance to do a recall. Ella! Yes! Good girl! Good girl! Good! That was really hard. It took her a second there. Yes! Good! So I'm going to give her multiple rewards because she came from such a far distance that time. Ella! Yes! Yes! Good girl! Ella! Yes! Good girl! Then let her go play.
I'm trying to separate myself from her. All right, here we go. Ella! Yes! Good girl! You see, my dogs see me as a tree, and I don't mean that in a gratuitous way, of course. It is a reward system. Dogs only care about a reward, and so all of their actions and all of their motivations are for the consequence of receiving a reward at the end. And so if you take the reward away, then it makes it less likely that the dog's going to want to perform, and it's going to make it hard to build a natural movement, a natural feeling, a natural flow. Um, and then it's going to feel forced. And part of the reason I don't like to use leashes is because I don't like to force the dog, to confine the dog into doing something that I want them to do. I want them to perform all of their actions naturally. And so my job is to simply just walk around with treats in my pocket and to reward them every time they are, you know, doing something that I would like them to do. Essentially, it's free shaping their behaviors. Um, I can teach them to sit all day long, sit, 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 or I can just wait. And when they sit, I give them a treat. Then they sit again, then I give them a treat. And in their mind it goes, wow, I receive a treat every time I sit down. So maybe I should sit down and see if he gives me a treat. See, it works both ways. The dogs have a particular way of thinking. And so if you think like the dog, or if you are a dog, I don't know, I don't know much about you, but if, if you think the way the dog thinks, then it makes it so much easier to train a dog without even realizing that the dog's being trained. The dog just assumes this to be part of their life and then naturally the bad behaviors just fall to the wayside because you've reinforced the good behaviors all naturally and there have been all things that the dog has done of their own free will without you uh, forcing them to it, without you putting a leash on them and, and you know, tugging them back every time they don't, they, they don't come back. I like to think of it as avoidance. If you avoid negative behaviors, if you never allow them to experience a negative behavior, then they never know what that behavior is. And so if you put them in a position where they're learning how to do something bad, then it becomes harder and harder to correct. And that's where the leashes come in and that's where the prong collars come in and all of that stuff. I've never used any of that, but I've also never had a terrible dog, right? But that's also because there are no such things as terrible dogs, just terrible people. I have had terrible people, and I have had to train those people on how to interact with dogs and how to, you know, get the most out of their dogs and how, their interactions and how to build trust with the dogs. Dogs just have, if the dog's bad, is bad, quote unquote, it's because the dog lacks confidence, it's because the dog is fearful, they are unsure of their place in your life. So you have to be the one to take control. You have to be the one to make the dog feel secure. So really training is about training the human being to be consistent in their actions, to be repetitive in their actions, and to reward the behavior of the dog when these actions uh, uh, reveal a certain behavior that you would like to continue. And so that's really what my training is about. And I just hit the piano on accident and, and now I feel like we're in a, uh, a horror film. But this is not a horror film, I promise you. This is a kid-friendly Disney movie. A Disney movie of adventure, of fun, where we love dogs and where we love excitement, where we love to play and where everything's copacetic. So let's begin our dog trip. The most basic truth about dogs is they simply work on a reward. They would do something if there's a reward at the end. So you have to use that to your advantage. It makes no sense to pull the dog around, pull the dog on a leash, while training the dog to want to give you this behavior. What I want my dog to do is perform these behaviors naturally. And so I like to put them in a situation where they're most likely to perform the behaviors. And when they perform the behaviors, of course, I'll give them a treat. I'll give them praise, I'll give them love. Love and affection is probably the most important tool you have as a dog trainer. Or just as a human being who's handling a dog, who's teaching your dog basic uh, mannerisms and all of this stuff. So we have Ella here, who's a puppy. When I brought Ella to the house, Ella was scared. She was nervous. She was uncertain. She had a tail stuck between her legs. 
So I had to begin first the process of getting her to trust me, getting her to trust the other dogs, and introducing them in a way that was natural to what the dogs would do in the wild. If you're paying attention to her body language right now, you can see she's a bit nervous, which is normal for a puppy. Um, it's not something that happens overnight. It's something that takes time, it takes patience. When a dog is between one to four months old, you can essentially train what you would call their personality. Um, you can mold them into the kind of dog that they're going to be. Uh, this is called the imprinting. Um, the mum would do it, the dad would do it normally. When you have the dog, you have to be the one to start conditioning the behavior, conditioning the kind of dog you want that dog to be. And that comes with patience and it comes with being very, very effective in your training methods right from the start. And when the point comes where they're able to be trained, which is around four months, then all of a sudden you find that your dog is more ready than you thought that they would be. Um, and that's because you worked in those very first four months to secure the dog's attachment to you, um, level of anxiety has been reduced, they are in a calm and submissive state, they're more aware, they understand training and they understand you. And so from that point on, everything else just tends to work itself out. Ella, I just picked up two days ago. I'm going to show her a different kind of love. It's a love of structure and it's a love of patience. So, Caprice ringing the bell right now because she wants to go outside and go potty. So, I'm teaching Ella as well to ring the bell. And I do that by just putting the bell over, putting the bell in view and giving her a chance to ring it on her own. However long that takes, because I don't want to force her to do it. Sometimes I will, I will put their nose in front of it and kind of just tap it if they allow me to, but I don't want to force them into it because if you do that, then it takes longer. You want them to do something that they would do naturally or you know, you want them to feel like they did it on their own because then it's easier for them to go to do it again. So, so obviously they're playing. These two are puppies. This is Capri. Capri is six months old, uh, seven months old now. And of course, Ella is four months old. This is Juicebox over there. Juicebox is 12 years old. So she's a lot more well-trained and obviously you can see she's a lot more calm. So I need to get these two in a state of calmness before we can begin. So I do that by getting their attention. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of gently ch -ch -ch. over here, over here, Capri. So she's she's ringing the bell because she really wants to go. So I'm gonna push her back because I, I want her to learn to give me space to open the door. So here, ch -ch -ch. and part of training is really just frustrating a dog to the point where they give up. And at the point where they give up, you want to reward them and say, this is the behavior that I want. So Ella's over here. I'm gonna push her back. I'm gonna push her back a bit. I'm gonna wait for her to sit. Hey, 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 pay attention. Capri's a puppy and naturally wants to play. And so she's going to try to reach to Ella. So what I'm doing is putting myself in between her and what she wants and then rewarding her for looking at me instead. Yes. And I'm gonna bring Ella over here and have her sit down. Sit. Good. And I put my hand out like this for weight. By the way, it's very important for you to use hand signals because hand signals plus the words will make it a lot quicker for the dog to understand what it is you want. So every time I say wait, I'll do this. I've got a treat in my hand. And puppies have very minimal attention spans, so you can't try to hold them for too long. You just wait until you get the behavior you want, and immediately reward them for it.
Sit. Good. Wait. So even though I'm opening the door slowly, I'm going to stand between her and the door so she doesn't go out. And whenever she does look at me, yes, give her a treat. Capri, sit. And this is to tell her that I don't want her running out before me. So even though she's looking outside, I'm going to stand between her and the door. Yes, and when she sits down, give her a, give her a reward for sitting down. Try again. And now I can see that I have their attention. Then I'm going to say, OK. Closeness doesn't happen in a day. Closeness happens through trust, through patience, and repetition of behavior. She's not doing this naturally. I've got treats here. Yes, and she wants the treats. And I want to look cool when I explain this to you. And so I put the treats right here as a way to incentivize her to stay in this position. And I just do this over and over until it becomes the norm, essentially. This is how training works. You could train your dog to do anything. No matter how uncomfortable it might seem, because it's all about the reward for the dog. Okay. So now she doesn't want to leave. You know why? Because for as long as she's been holding that position, there's been a reward. Yes. Now, this might become something that we do all the time. It's too early to tell. This is my first YouTube video. Just watch. You'll come back to this one day and you'll say to yourself, Wow, he really played the wrong key that time. And after that, you'll say to yourself, He really does know what he's talking about. Training a dog by not training a dog, by simply just letting them exist within the parameters you've set and then rewarding them for doing the things that you would like them to do. Yes. If you notice, she's starting to place her face on my shoulders, because that's been the only time where she's received the reward and she's starting to catch on. Yes. That's what training is, really. It's not complicated at all. So I'm going to play you out. And then I'll see you. I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you can get notified when I post the next. I can't believe you're still watching this. <laughs>